Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Cedric Nunn's Photo Talks, in which I talk about images I have made, including their content, context, and aspects of their making. And I say images because today, again, I will um, discuss several images, five, five images which uh, are portraits, um, a series of portraits that look at um, sugar farm workers in particular. So the first image, as you've seen, um, a portrait of a rather regal looking man. And the caption reads, Cane cutter on a sugar farm. Inyoni, KwaZulu Natal, 1986. And in the mid 80s, I made a series of images of sugar farm workers because that sugar sugar is the dominant industry in the uh, KwaZulu uh, Natal coast coastline, and uh, yeah, by far, um, sort of a mono huge monocrop, the major industrial agricultural industrial output. Um, this a uh, gentleman that you see here, this laborer that you see in this image, is um, a sugarcane cutter. And sugarcane cutters back in those days would cut, would be expected to cut and stack four tons of sugarcane per day. I found out subsequently that that is the equivalent in terms of energy of a comrade's marathon runner. Comrades for people outside of South Africa is a um, legendary long distance race, running race um, of about, I think it's about 80 kilometers or so. Um, and the kind of energy that you'd need for to run that, sugarcane cutters did every day. So, um, uh, sugarcane is, uh, the sugarcane cutters are largely um, migrants. Very few Zulu people themselves do it, unless it's their own sugarcane that they are farming themselves, but they're not easily laborers on farms within their own province. So the, the farmers, the, 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 the laborers come from elsewhere. In the 1800s, they mostly came from Mozambique. And I know this because my great-grandfather, John Dunn, was um, designated as the, as they called it then, the protector of, uh, let me just get it right here, he was appointed the protector of immigrants, which was a British euphemism for a labor contractor. He had the, the license to import labor from Mozambique for the, the early beginnings of the KwaZulu, the, the Natal, let me put it, the Natal colony sugar industry. And um, he was very successful at this because in, prior to that, the, the Mozambican Tsonga people had to, on their own accord, make the hazardous trip through Zulu territory um, several days walk, um, a week literally or more, walk through that territory um, in which they would, uh, if they plundered local Zulu uh, uh, crops, there were re retribution for that. So they came in quite a pitiful state. Um, and um, my great grandfather established um, um, uh, overnight accommodations. Uh, agreements with the local chiefs that the area through which they traveled. And I, I should say that um, he was, uh, he got that position on the recommendation of uh, King Kachwayo or the king in waiting Kachwayo at the time to be that protector of immigrants. Um, and um, so they were, they, they had feeding stations along the way, accommodation stations and uh, the protection of, from the king himself and the tribes that uh, ensured their, their protection. And in fact, he was 
it was so successful that in the in in the four years from 1874 to 1878, the number of immigrants doubled from 2,500 um, laborers, that is, to 5,000, and it continued to rise after that. Um, so this um, this industry, and we'll, this, um, here you can see the second image here of uh, that says uh, a tractor driver on a sugar farm, Nangeta, KwaZulu Natal, 18, um, sorry, <laughs> 1986, getting my centuries mixed up there. Um, um, one of the reasons for this, I believe, and I stand con to be corrected, was that um, in the 1800s in particular, um, Zulu men culturally were not uh, the kind of people who would work um, doing, you know, in fields, field work, you know, um, which under the British was now, you know, expected, was quite exacting that you needed to work yeah, an eight to 12 hour day uh, in the hot African sun um, and the Tsongas maybe because they came from a more um, subtropical um, climate, were able, more, more able to do that kind of arduous task. Uh, and, it's, and so, so um, to this day, a huge number of, um, of people who reside uh, along the sugar belt and uh, describe themselves as Zulu, um, probably have Tsonga ancestry because many of those migrants simply n never returned to Mozambique and stayed and married. I know in the area I am on the north coast, just across the Tugela River, there are self-describing people here who realize that they have Tsonga ancestry and were um, were from that 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 prehistory. Sugar you know, sugar. The interesting thing about the sugar industry, and we we'll look at the third image here, which is of um, sugar farm laborer Mangeta KwaZulu Natal, 1984. Um, this man with a huge load of sugar cane and uh, the chains that are used to bind them and lift the, the chains that he has in his hand are probably attached to uh, a mechanical hoist that would hoist them from onto the trucks that would transport them to the sugar mills. I, my, my first uh, encounter as an, uh, of employment from the age of 16 until, until I turned 24 was, um, 23 at least, was um, in a sugar mill. Uh, that was the industry in this region. I actually physically made sugar, sugar from syrup. Um, the interesting thing about uh, that I've been very aware of sugar is that it's there's almost no criticism of sugar, the sugar industry, in the media. Um, it's it's uh, it has that status of not being in any way open to criticism because it's so important to the economy of this region. It continues to be, although it's now being, I believe, uh, um, supplanted by mining. Um, and so it's a, mo a monoculture um, with little diversity and highly extractive. And um, um, as we can see, you know, from the image that you will look at now, which is uh, simply entitled Farm Workers, Emoyeni, KwaZulu-Natal, 1988. Um, and you'll see the, from this group, this uh, this portrait of four wor workers, um, you know, who've just just come off the field at this point, um, that uh, it, you can hardly tell their sex from this image. Um, yeah, very grueling task that remains to this day one that is um, one that is near invisible.
we see these workers like specks on the horizon. We even pass them on roads walking through, but they are almost invisible. Um, and they they continue to work in feudal, medieval type conditions, very poorly paid, and highly their their labour highly extracted. Um, so it's a very troubling uh, industry, in in my opinion, in many ways, as as um, important as it is for the for the for the province's economy. And I, I think there have to be better ways that the state has to understand, you know, we need to produce more food, for instance, <laughs> and less of this, uh, this crop that um, is, yes, of course, um, uh, can be exported and the, the revenue that one gets from exporting. Um, so we'll, we'll close on the image um, that we see here of um, that one of my favorites, of a migrant entitled The Migrant Worker from the Eastern Cape on a Sugar Farm. Negeta KwaZulu-Natal, 1987. And um, yes, I think this image kind of captures the pathos of migrancy, exploitation, yearning for home, uh, consoling himself with the music, the blues, I imagine. Baganga, a kind of blues that uh, sustains people through the hardships that we are sometimes forced to endure. So on that note, I will end the series of talks and say thank you for watching. Uh, more information on myself and my work can be found on my website, a link to which, including my blog and email address, can be found in the video description below. If you like this talk, remember to click the like button and press subscribe. It helps the channel grow. Thank you.